Hi guys. BlendRig is my attempt to create a standard and reusable rig for Blender. Here I'll try to make a brief explanation on how BlendRig 3 works. The main deformation of BlendRig is achieved with the Mesh Deform modifier, which can deliver smooth and even deformations very quickly. As you can see, the topology of the Mesh Deform cage was created strategically to produce a pull-up effect over the mesh. That pull-up effect, along with the double quaternion algorithm, is what allows BlendRig to have a better volume preservation. In general terms, BlendRig does not use shape keys. All the deformation is achieved mechanically, and as you will see later, that allows the system to be easily transferred to other models. In BlendRig 3, I have implemented a muscle system based on the shrink wrap modifier. Well, when I started creating the system, the shrink wrap modifier had certain problems that could fortunately be fixed in Blender 2.49 and for that I must thank André Pinto for having such a nice and quick response to what I reported in the Blender Coders channel. Well, as I said, the muscle system is based on the shrink wrap modifier. The muscles are very simple geometric objects that were easily modeled to fit each corresponding part of the mesh. The different types of contractions that the muscles can have are achieved by bone-driven shape keys. There are several ways in which the shrink wrap modifier can be used for simulating the muscles and the bones. Basically, I used two methods, the nearest surface point and the projection method. Most of the muscles affect the model with the nearest surface point method as this method delivers a smoother deformation and it can push the mesh outwards as well as inwards. So, for example, when the biceps contract, the mesh is not only pushed up to produce the bulging, but certain parts of it are pulled inwards to produce holes and lines that mark the muscle. In the case of the bones, I use the shrink wrap modifier in projection mode. This allows the model not to be deformed when the bones are beneath its surface. Therefore, the bones and the tendons do not affect the skin in the rest position, but they do create creases and prominent details when the joints are rotated. Moreover, this technique not only produces the effect of muscle contraction, but it is also of great help for volume preservation. Well, until now you saw a mere technical aspect of the deformation system, but there are a couple of extra tricks that make all this work. The first thing that makes the trick is that the muscle objects must have a nice amount of subdivisions in order to produce a smooth deformation. This is because the projection that the shrink wrap modifier performs depends directly on the density of the projection object in this case, the muscles. So, in Blendrick 3, most of the muscle objects have a subsurf level of 5 for the rendering time. The second and most important trick of all is that the muscle system is not calculated over the low resolution model but it is calculated over the mesh 
once it is subdivided the first time. That way, the model has much more vertices to project from. And this allows Blenrick to deliver a much more detailed muscle deformation. Well, the third and the last trick is that I added a smooth modifier controlled by a vertex group to smooth out certain areas of the mesh that are excessively creased by the muscle objects. If you take a look at the modifier list, you will first see the deformation modifiers, then the subsurf modifier at level 1, then all the shrink wrap modifiers, and finally the smooth modifier along with the second subsurf modifier that allows the model to have the necessary density for the displacement modifier. As all the shrink wrap modifiers make things a little bit slow, I decided to make a low polygon model without muscle simulation that is located in layer 11. This is intended for animation. Since Blenrick 2, I have been developing a facial animation system based on Mesh Deform. This technique has the ability to produce a much more organic deformation over the face. As you see, I used a separate facial cage for this. As you can see, this method allows the skin to be deformed in a very organic way. When you move a part of the face, the adjacent areas are also affected by the movement, giving a very realistic feel. This can obviously be complemented with facial shape keys when needed. You can also save a post library to be used for facial animation. It was a little bit hard to get this mechanism working as having the facial cage driven by the main armature produced an incremental deformation over the model as the deformation of the facial cage was overlapped to the deformation of the main body cage. Therefore, the solution for this problem was to make a mechanism that allowed the local coordinate system of the facial rig not to be modified. That's why I created an extra facial armature that mimics the poses of the main armature and this facial armature along with the facial cage are parented to the head bone of the main armature. So their local coordinates never get transformed when the head moves actually.